Welcome to South America, the land of culture, cuisine, soccer players, and the only place on earth with Coca-Cola paramilitary groups. So today we're playing Victoria 3, which recently received a new DLC, Colossus of the South, adding new content to South America and bringing a whole new meaning to you are going to Brazil, which is why my goal today is to destroy Brazil in the name of forming Gran Colombia. This video is sponsored by Paradox and Victoria 3 is free to try for the next four days, so you too can cause global destabilization. So of all of these countries, of course, we have to choose the best one. Welcome to New Granada, also known as Colombia. So the big thing about starting in New Granada is that we are one of the major powers in South America. We can invade our neighbors. I mean, we're, we're gonna invade our neighbors. And of course, our very first research is gonna be uh, the stock exchange. We do want to take a look at all of our political parties. So right now, it seems like we have the landowners and the Catholic Church are the major ones, but we also have a fairly sizable liberal party over here. So although right now our government is looking pretty good, I am going to do us just a, just a little favor for far in the future and we're going to promote the trade unions. That's not really going to do anything for now and probably for the next 20 years, but we'll just leave it there and see what happens. Wink, wink. Not like we need communism to be authoritarian because uh, we're pretty horrible right now. Pro-slavery, elitist, patriarchal, statocratic, bias, moralist, and another patriarchal guy. We are going to go with religious schools for right now because they are totally free, you know, besides some unintended consequences. Charity education is also really good for the poor, uh, which is great because 50% of our people are in poverty. On the bright side, I mean, we could only go up from here, right? Following new Grenadine independence from Spain, a power vacuum was left in place of the colonial government, and of course what filled it is armed authoritarianism, just like most things. Our overall goal is, as you'd probably expect, uh, to conquer all of South America. And of course, the final boss is going to be Brazil. In terms of improving relations, it makes probably the most sense to do Brazil, the UK, and all the major powers around us so that they just ignore us. Because surprise, surprise, I don't want to get invaded by the guy who dies right before Queen Victoria. So it seems like Bolivia wants to ally us, and of course my response is no, we are going to invade you instead. Unfortunately though, I do think that Bolivia is going to be our major enemy right here, because if we take Ecuador, we're going to be bordering them. But it's important to remember that this is Victoria 3. And for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, Victoria 3 is an Excel simulator. You guys probably won't see this on the actual recording, but most of my time is spent in this screen right here. Much of the game is trying to balance your economy, making sure you are not totally destroying your people, I mean, optionally, and trying to balance out trade routes, production, and all kinds of things like that. So up here we have money, up here we have convoys, which are for trading, diplomatic power, influence, and authority, which is, you know, you could probably imagine what that's for. And bureaucracy, which is mostly for taxes. Well, up north, I was going to improve relations with the United States, and then I realized Texas just got obliterated. Well, this uh, this video is going to be off to an interesting start. We'll, we'll see what happens to the rest of the world. I'll probably be keeping an eye on there because, you know, when Austria inevitably explodes, that's kind of funny. In the meantime, we get to watch Brazil be in the middle of a civil war. Uh, lots of lots of death. What's going on over here? Oh, okay. We just, we just witnessed a slaughter. That's cool. Great. And now we have have religious schools. Hey, it shows a loyal and morally healthy population. I like the way you think. If by morally healthy you mean willing to invade our neighbors, we're clear. And then of course, as you would imagine, our healthcare system is again going to be charity hospitals, so just religious stuff. The religious stuff is really good for the start of the game because it is totally free, and I mean, you know, the, the penalties that happen are much further down the line that I'm not gonna care about. Venezuela has declared us their rival. Oh, that's, that's interesting and an agitator who wants homesteading. Well, I guess if they're gonna declare rivalry on us, we may as well declare a rivalry on them. Although interesting that they're deciding to do that because I'm pretty sure that my military is vastly larger than theirs. They have 10 battalions and we have 18. Yeah, I, I think we could kill them. Oh, that's right, we have elections. I don't know why I thought our country was totally undemocratic. I mean, now that I take a look at our government a second time, it, it isn't very democratic. So here's the thing. Basically, we have an event where if we keep the military out of the government for a long enough time, we can try and wrestle control of the government from the military. If they do get into power, then they gain a massive political strength bonus and will dictate most of our policies. So of course, um, I'm going to reform them into the government right now. Sure, that might not sound like a great idea, but trust me, it is. So now that the armed forces are in, that policy thing should go up and up and up, and hopefully we'll be able to get even more armed forces political strength. Is that a good thing? Not for our neighbors. Oh my
my god, I just took one of the events that made some people more loyalist and, uh, oh ho ho! Loyalists essentially help out our government in terms of, well, they, they don't have giant armed rebellions. That's pretty nice. But they also just generally increase the approval of all the factions in our government. Higher approval of factions gives us a whole bunch of benefits. For example, the royal folk give us a whole bunch of uh, factory output. Landowners will invest in making more production. And the Catholic Church will make people have more sex, I guess. All right, great. Charity hospitals, which are going to increase the standard of living for a lot of the different people. Standard of living is important because if it's too low, uh, people will hate us. Now, I'm not above entire populations hating me, but I am above being guillotined. Our next law will, of course, be uh, the National Guard. We do need some kind of super secret police. Oh my god, the bourgeoisie got so mad about the secret police that uh, they just got really racist. Yes, I suppose that does make sense. But that is going to allow us to uh, more effectively oppress everyone else. Good job, us. Right, well, we started to build the foundation of our economy, trying to, you know, make our people not totally broke. Again, option. Plus, if we head into our government, our armed forces loves us. Beautiful, and we've researched banking. We can 10% mint it. Yeah, let's just print more money. When has that ever gone wrong? Wait, is, is slavery legal? I, I mean, not today, but in our country. Well, I, I mean, I suppose that's not that bad, considering the alternative. Oh, cool, we had a, uh, a new election, and uh, wow, the, okay. I think that was even more lopsided than the last election. Some people say that you vote with your wallet. Uh, what will we really do? Well, I would say things in New Granada are going quite well. Uh, I mean, only 46% of the people are below the poverty line. Truly paradise on earth. But we are slowly building up our economy, putting up all kinds of new buildings, trying to actually employ people because I'm pretty sure most of our population uh, does not have a job. Perhaps the worst thing they could do. I mean, I I'd say things are pretty good. The average person is just struggling. Sucks. All right, great. We got our law enforcement investment up to level three. I, I think I've only had law enforcement literally Literally exist in our country for less than a year. Oh, and you know what? Let's just pop that up to level four, because why not? My law enforcement decreases the penalties from turmoil, so people being angry makes sense, and also decreases the number of radicals from standard of living decreases. So essentially, when people lose all their money, uh, they, they don't get mad at the government. It's nice when I look at our journal events and I see, you know, something about military, something about the Metropolitan Police, the Great Hunger, Poverty Crisis, a native uprising in Dixie. Wait, is that a Slur? I sure hope not. Well, that got me interested in looking at the United States and, uh, President Cyrus Coffee. Who are you? Well, something pretty bad must have happened in the last 30 years because, uh, the government is owned by the Southern Planners and it be has become a presidential dictatorship. And perhaps even more frightening, their literacy rate is 50%. Okay, never mind. I don't know why I thought my literacy rate was higher. Uh, it's 30%. I'm pretty sure there's only about 17 people in the country who can read, and as soon as anybody else figures out how to do it, our tax system is going to be destroyed. Okay, all right, nice. We got this really, really busted event here. So a popular playwright endorses whatever reform we were doing, elected bureaucrats, nobody cares. And so we get a couple of options. We can either increase the success, we can either increase group attraction, or we can get 20 prestige. Now, when we take 20 prestige, that's insane. We went all the way from 35 prestige to 55, boosting us up super high. The higher we get on here, we do get a couple of bonuses. We do get more things for being a major power, and then eventually, maybe even a great power. The main benefit of being a great power, of course, being that you can mess with pretty much anybody anywhere. And who doesn't want to do that? Oh my god, I wasn't even paying attention to Central America. It just exploded. Now we've got Costa Rica, we have Nicaragua, we have we have everybody over here now. And uh, does Costa Rica happen to have any allies, just, just unrelated? They don't, do they? Well, that's just certainly really tragic, is it? I mean, somebody could just walk in there, theoretically, and take the whole country with no resistance. Well, I wish their single division good luck against my 18. Oh, and my elected bureaucrats. Go get them, boys. Wait, a land of want. Leader of the rural folk has been loudly accusing the conservative party of misrule. Why are we to blame? Have they tried being less poor? Poor. I mean, I, I have to pick that one now. Okay, good. Seems like everybody's declared neutrality, so we can declare war on these people, and literally nobody cares. Well, if we take a look at the actual battle going on, their entire military is made up of one guy on a horse and one dude with a sword. I'm not sure you got the wrong memo, my dude, but uh, it, it, this, this is a gunfight. Oh, okay, now the war broke out. We, we were just shooting at them, and we weren't even at war. No, see, this is the real war going on. We, we get to- oh, my- the, uh... <laughs>
They've dematerialized into the ocean. Jesus Christ. L literally. All right, well, it looks like we burned down pretty much everything. This is this is an impressive amount of damage that we have done to these cities, especially given that we only have muskets. Either way, we can go ahead and make peace to conquer Costa Rica in just a second. There we go. And we can also try and incorporate it into our state. So by incorporating, it'll make it, you know, an actual part of our country, as opposed to just being those weirdos that we annexed like three years ago. Also, I did not realize how amazingly successful our government is right now. The rural folk love us, the intelligista love us, the petite bourgeoisie, the landowners, the Catholic Church, and the armed forces. What did we do? I mean, we invaded someone. I, I, I guess that did it. Due to Russia establishing an interest in Grand Colombia, we can now conduct diplomacy. What does Russia want with us? Speaking of which, what is actually going on in all of the other countries around the world? The United States looks like it's thriving. Queen Victoria is now in charge of the U.S. UK. France is, I don't even know what France is doing. Austria is probably on the verge of collapse as it will be for the next 20 years. And the lower part of Africa looks like it wants to burn my eyes. Oh my God. Okay. Th this is why we talk about France. They're just giving us money now. Now I know I said earlier that we were going to try to kill all the people below us, but because of big daddy Brazil being so scary, I'm actually going to try and instead get a trade agreement going so we can get the Peru Bolivian Confederation. Hopefully that means they will will help us destroy Brazil? I don't know. Oh, wait, I think I'm an idiot because I chose to destroy the Confederation at first, so I think the game just assumed that I would hate it, but I was trying to ally them. Well, you know, on the bright side, the deal with the radicals, uh, increased investment in law enforcement to level five. The dedicated police forces saw the series of high profile murders. Confidence is at an all time high. Not to brag, but uh, one out of every three people in my country can read. Yeah, I know, it's a bit of a big deal. It also looks like we can get an alliance with Chile all the ways down here. We do owe them an obligation, but that's not that bad, actually. We're also down to zero infamy, which is pretty good. Infamy pretty much means uh, the more we do horrible things, the more people hate us. For some reason, invading your neighbors is seen as an infamous thing to do. Couldn't imagine why. All right, well, I don't really expect anyone to come and try and help. Nope, nope. Everybody declared neutrality because nobody cares. Well, 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 Nicaragua. You know, I don't really have anything clever to say besides uh, we own you now. Okay, so now now we own a small little strip of land across here. Uh, we're not very infamous. Yeah, nobody cares. Actually, we're about to lose all the infamy we gained from that war. The main thing we have to watch out for, though, is that, uh, of course, the number of radicals is you know, slightly increasing. Something about we just took over 300,000 people. Minor thing like that. So we do need to avoid a full-scale revolt that happens in Central America. So France was bankrolling us. Now Austria is bankrolling us. I don't know what we're doing right. But hey, I'm not gonna complain. Also, Austria, don't uh, don't you have your own problems? Something about like the imminent implosion of your country? Oh, the Liberal Party got the industrialists. Now we're talking. Ideally, I want to get this party out of office because the Liberal Party is a little bit better in terms of, well, capitalism. And that's pretty much the only thing I'm promoting right now. Oh, that's not good. Mexico is damaging our relations with them. That probably means that they want to declare war on us. Although we don't have a border with them quite yet, but that is very not good. Something about the uh, 60 battalions they have, 7.5 million GDP, three times ours, and the, uh, oh, even lower literacy rate. We got them beat on one thing. <laughs> hey, look at that. America has gone back to its, uh, its true form, which is not a presidential dictatorship, but a presidential oligarchy. Good work, guys. I knew you had it in you. Now that you're all, uh, capitalist, can, can you, uh, can you help me out with that, you know, Mexico thing? I'm, I'm sorry. Spain wants to enter into a defensive pact with us? Either the Queen of Spain is absolutely zonked out of her mind, or the empire is collapsing because I don't know why they would even bother to contact me. Constitutional monarchy. Yeah, okay. If that's what you want to call it. I mean, I'll, I'll say yes because this can't really possibly be bad. Well, well, I can think of a couple of ways it can be bad. Ideally, we're just not going to get pulled into any other wars at all because we are literally across the planet from them. But, you know, that's not going to stop Spain from inconveniencing me, probably. Right, well, this seems like an excellent opportunity to invade Venezuela. I mean, besides, what were they doing with all that land? And anyways. Okay, wait a second. So France just sided with Venezuela. Wait a minute, and then France immediately abandoned their support for Venezuela? <laughs> I'm sorry? And then the United States sided with Venezuela? And then they backed out? Well, you know, I'd say I feel bad about the whole thing. Well, no, I, 
I kind of do. Imagine getting dipped on by two of the major powers in the world. I mean, one was France, so it really doesn't count. Okay, well, the front line is set up. As you can see, there are people all over the place. This is, this is a lot of people. I'm at least somewhat confident that we're going to be able to break through. I mean, we're losing on a couple of fronts, which is true. But I think overall, our combat power is quite a bit higher than theirs. I hope. I say as I am watching them conquer some of our stuff. Okay, and then we, and then we took it back. Okay, now we're starting to overrun them. And, and this is actually super close because we have like zero war support left right now. So we have to win this battle extremely quickly. Okay, thank God. I think that's the end of it. We should be able to now capture their city. Yes, we can. And there we go. So that gets us another 500k population center, which is pretty nice. Although we do, of course, have to make sure that it doesn't rebel. Actually, turmoil is only 35%. That is really good. Oh my God. Okay, the Liberal Party has actually won for once which is honestly quite incredible. What I am kind of scared about is Brazil because they were damaging relations. They're now at negative 109 and I'm pretty sure they could declare war on us at pretty much any point. We do still have a defensive pact with Spain all the ways across the world, but I'm not really sure if Spain's gonna be much help either. Although maybe instead of Brazil, I should be more concerned by the uh, 560,000 radicals in my country. Oh, and a defensive pact from Peru, Bolivia. Don't mind if I do. Now we are kind of covered from Brazil. I mean, I think if Brazil declares war on us, we should be able to take them on. I mean, I do say that 74 battalions, they're pretty much as powerful as Spain right now. And I'm not even sure if Spain is going to help us. Oh, new parties formed in our country. The Radical Party. Oh, that. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Wait, it's called the Radical Party, but it's of the industrialists. That is, uh, kind of scary. Funnily enough, though, I'm pretty sure I accidentally formed that party because I started deficit spending way too hard. So we, uh, we bumped up those taxes to very high. And of course, by doing that, everybody gets pissed at the groups already in the government. And thus, the guillotine party was formed. Not for social reasons, not for moral reasons, just because they wanted to pay less taxes. Respectable. But we just got an event, God's Will. One of the members of the Catholic Church has been preaching in favor of the conservative party, and we can respond with, but God surely wants the radical party to win. And it seems like our people also want to reunite Grand Columbia. And and you know what? Okay. Unsurprisingly, everybody else below us is going to get angry because, you know, we, we declared that we want to annex them. Well, I think the game is trying to tell me something. Something about my tax rate being 100%. I don't quite remember. So we'll lower that back down to actually reasonable-ish taxes. And of course, as soon as I do, my standard of living just skyrockets. I was just relaxing back in my chair because I thought we were just going to build up our state, but apparently Brazil is trying to declare war. Well, this seems like a great idea to use all of those military alliances that we have. So they've started the diplomatic incident with us and I've added three primary demands, which means even if they back out, they have to do all of these, which is give us the entire Amazon, give us 10% of their income for the next five years, and then they just lose a massive chunk of their land anyways. And the only reason I do that is because I realized I could call the UK into this war. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I guess I can. So as soon as we get into the maneuvering phase or the diplomatic, play phase. I could just walk over to Britain and be like, hey, can we, uh, can we sway them with a banned slavery war goal? Well, this got a lot scarier than I thought it was going to need to be. The United States just sided with Brazil. So now that we have the UK with us, I was going to call in Spain because they are our ally, but then I saw this. I don't know why it is that Russia wants to join this war. Uh, apparently they want a random treaty port somewhere over here. And you know what? There, they, they could just take that one random treaty port and okay, well, now we have Russia. So now it is the United States and Brazil versus uh, New Granada, Great Britain, and Russia. We have 572 divisions. Wait a minute, Russia's already at war. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. So they, they were totally okay with joining this war, despite the fact that I think they are already at war with Austria right now. Uh, the UK is sending a bunch of its divisions over, but I don't think it's that many. Okay, I was also able to get New Granada in here. I I, I'm kind of surprised because I thought I had no more maneuvers left, but I guess not. I'm just seriously hoping that the United Kingdom actually comes in and tries to help us because it is, uh, uh... 
it seems like the UK's armies are slowly funneling in. It's just that they are so far away and spread thin. I mean, we have a good 42 divisions here, uh, but you can see America's armies also coming down here to come get us. So despite the fact that we have 500... Oh my God, Russia ended its war. Oh boy. Wait, I think we were going to lose without this. The boys are on their way. This is this is like 100 divisions in of itself. This is another 100 divisions. Oh my, that's 150 divisions. The fact that I'm pretty sure all of those are conscript peasants and they're just sailing across the Atlantic Ocean to go fight for a country they've probably never heard of against another country they've probably never heard of. Actually, that sounds pretty normal for history. All right, here we go. The great, okay, nitroglycerin, not the time. The great battle royale has begun and already we've taken the Amazon. Oh, okay, maybe that was a bad idea. But the UK is coming in with a whole bunch of their own troops. They have troops over here, coming down here. Uh, I think Bolivia is actually Bolivia Bolivia kind of just gave up. Not that I can really blame them. I'm pretty sure some of the Russian convoys are just straight up getting intercepted, but there's so many conscripts just funneling down. It, you can't actually intercept all of them. Okay, I don't think I was looking at the right numbers because I forgot that the United States, most of their army is normally conscripted. They could get up to 751 battalions and Russia hasn't even extended fully. They could still get 1,045. I think we have inadvertently created a world war. Oh my God. Russia is just slamming as many troops as they can through this one thin choke point. And seeing as the boys are just flooding in from all sides, you know, we got a casual 64, 56, 28. It's so many. I am very not sure what is going on right now because Russia just keeps moving all of their units all around and try. I think actually they're trying to go for naval invasions right now. Of course, I say that, but Russia has literally stacked 200 troops on a single province. Oh my God. This... This can't be a good idea. Oh no. Okay, it looks like Peru just lost their side of the war, but we do still have to fight, you know, everybody else. I'm kind of hoping that nothing happens. Oh my God, as soon as the United States capitulated, everything just broke. There were practically no troops that weren't of the United States. All right, well, that did not take long as soon as the United States capitulated for all of Brazil to pretty much get demolished. They have all of the remaining troops just sitting in this one area and province, but the literal 1,000 Russian conscripts are on their way. This really brings a whole new meaning to you are going to Brazil. All right, and Finally, they are pretty much capitulated. I don't think there's much of anything left. I mean, we could just sit on them in terms of occupation and just wait for them to capitulate to all of our war goals. And ba-boom. So now they just lost 1.7 million GDP worth of some random province over there, which is actually a pretty significant chunk. We were able to conquer the Amazon and now we are being paid 3.5K every single week just from the Brazilian income. Oh, and also I'm pretty sure their country is now going to be in complete disarray because the UK banned slavery. Of course, it seems only right to celebrate with a random duel, and I wonder if that's going to end with one of my political leaders dying. Yes, it did. I'm sorry, what? Now the United States of America is starting to bankroll us. Okay, now we're just making huge fat stacks because I, I guess, I don't know, America felt bad? You know, it's a good thing we conquered the Amazons. Now we have something to spend a lot of money on, uh, and that is 39 logging camps in the Amazon rainforest. I love the economy. And now we've got in the labor movement. I was actually trying to research this so we can get workplace safety. Joking. Of course. Right, well, interestingly enough, that entire war uh, generated us zero infamy. So, what's up, Venezuela? Now, as long as America doesn't do a weird thing and just randomly join because, we should be okay. Okay, well, it seems like nobody has joined either side. Thank God. So we should be able to just roll over Venezuela. And now Austria is going to bankroll us. I, I don't understand. And right about now, they should be completely capitulating and that should be the whole nation as ours. Boom. I'm somewhat surprised that no one seems to care that we've gobbled up what we have, but at the same time, I'm sure the world is slightly more messed up than I'm looking at it as. I mean, for starters, I think this is the third war between Austria, Prussia, and Russia. The Ottoman Empire looks, you know, ugly. Over here looks also ugly. Qing has turned into Great Qing. I don't know what to, okay, it turned into an absolute empire. We got the Japanese shogunate. Ah, yes, and someone down here is being invaded by France. All is as it should be. We've also just completed one of 
of our big objectives, which is to entrench the military so heavily in our politics, we cannot physically get them out. Not that I would want to. Well, it seems like the only country left to invade now is Ecuador, and that should allow us to form Gran Colombia. Unfortunately, we do have to damage relations low enough so that we can actually declare war on them, but besides that, we should be okay. Oh my god, now Ecuador is trying to improve our relations back up as we're trying to damage them. They know what's coming. What is happening over here? The American bourgeoisie revolt? I mean, interestingly enough, this government is slightly more democratic than the other one, which is probably not a very high bar, but still. Oh my god, finally. I have been waiting for an election where the industrialists, the intelligista, and the rurals are in the same damn party, which means I can finally boot out these guys and bring in a different party, which admittedly is going to have a pretty awful government right now, but I mean, hopefully it won't be that bad. And of course, with our new government, the first thing I want is freedom of conscience, because the Catholic Church has almost all of the voting power in the whole country, which I do not want. Oh, a trade agreement from Mexico? Don't mind if I do. Maybe they won't kill us. Okay, thank God. We we formed Colombia. All it took was for me to ban slavery in 1898. My OBS recording uh, got corrupted, so you guys didn't see me invading Ecuador, uh, which took about 20 years, uh, which was somehow Queen Victoria coming into South America, sieging down Ecuador, and then spending the next 10 years sieging Russia. I don't know what happened, but we have done it. Formed Colombia, and honestly, I would say the world is, is generally looking pretty good. Austria-Hungary is on the verge of collapse, which is, you know, no surprise. Prussia had a communist revolution like three months ago. Italy is about 40 years early in the, uh, the fascist department, and Queen Victoria was eaten by this guy. South America is also kind of on fire, but it has been for the past 200 years, so, yeah, you know. I'd say we've done the world a service by watching everybody kill each other. As for our goal of destroying Brazil, it is in complete tatters, and there was a civil war two years ago. Thank you again to Paradox for sponsoring this video. Victoria 3 is free from the 16th to the 20th, so I'd recommend you check it out on Steam, or in the link that I have in my description, so you too can and blow up the Ottoman Empire, conquer all of China, and most importantly, make the government of your dreams. Thanks for watching. See ya.